Hello. This is a question about the chain rule, in particular about its geometric meaning. We're invited to consider the hyperboloid x squared plus y squared minus z squared is equal to 1. Here is a hyperboloid I've prepared for you earlier. If you take z cross section, so z is equal to some constant, you end up with circles. If you take x or y to be constant, then you end up with hyperbolas. So you get something which is known as the hyperboloid, and it has some wonderful properties which we will explore in this question. In particular, if I trace along the hyperboloid where x is equal to z is equal to t, I get a line. Let's find out more about this line. The first thing I can do is just substitute z is equal to x is equal to t into the equation and find out what y is. And then I can just find dy dt. So I can actually do this question without using the chain rule. That's fine. Sometimes you can do that. Uh, in particular, if x is equal to z is equal to t, then the equation becomes t squared plus y squared minus t squared is equal to 1. So y is equal to plus or minus 1. Great. And I can take the derivative of that with respect to t. I could do that all day. dy dt of a constant, whether it's plus or minus 1, doesn't matter. That's always equal to 0. So this line that we're tracing along the hyperboloid is the line passing through the point uh, 0, 1, 0, and whose direction is 1, 0, 1. So that gives me a line, this line here. It's on the hyperboloid and it's a line. How interesting. Let's explore how we can do this question using the chain rule and we'll explore it in particular in a geometric sense. In part B, we're asked to find the normal to a hyperboloid. That might sound scary, but fortunately the normal to a function, which is defined in terms of uh, some variables equals constant, is easy to find. It is partial of f with respect to x, partial f with respect to y, partial f with respect to z. You don't get an easier normal to find than that. It's partial with respect to x is just 2x, partial with respect to y is 2y, and the partial with respect to z is negative 2z. This is the normal to a curve, which is described as f of variables equals some mess of the variables, which is equal to a constant. You may have seen this already. If you recall, uh, you can find the normal to a plane in this way, where the, if you have a plane which is of the form, say, ax plus by plus cz is equal to some constant, say 1, then the normal, you just read it off. It's the coefficients of a, b, c. That extends to not just planes, but arbitrary functions. In this case, the hyperboloid. It's just the the normal is just the partial derivatives of that function. In terms of our hyperboloid, if we're going to move along the line which we described in part A, the normal is a vector which is perpendicular to the surface of the hyperboloid. Good, good. We're starting to get some uh, geometric understanding as to why uh, what is the meaning of these partial derivatives, df dx, df dy, df dz? So now in part c, we see the chain rule coming into play. By the chain rule, df dt is this. It's the partial derivative of f with respect to one of its variables times dx dt, plus df dy times dy dt, plus df dz times dz dt. But I've written it in this particular way because I'm going somewhere. Ge geometrically, this actually means something. So let's, uh, let's leave it as the dot product of two vectors. This one we've seen before is the normal vector. This one is the direction that we're traversing the curve in. So remember, we're parameterizing this curve. We're actually moving it along a line. And this is the direction of that line. Good, good. First of all, we need to deduce that df dt is equal to 0. Uh, that's easy because f is equal to, yes, it's equal to this jumble of numbers, but it's also equal to 1. So df dt is d constant dt, which must be 0. 
but geometrically it means something very special. It means that the dot product of these two vectors is equal to zero, which means the two vectors are perpendicular. So as we traverse the hyperboloid, we're moving along this line in the, the direction vector, this one here points along the line, and the normal is perpendicular to that line. And now we come to the real crux of the question. Find dy dt. Of course, we, can do the, we did this in part A because we found y is a function of t directly, but here we're going to do it with, without actually finding what y is. And we're going to do it via the chain rule. So remember that by the chain rule, as we saw on the previous slide, we had uh, the normal vector, which I might just write as 2x, 2y, negative 2z, dotted with the derivatives dx dt, dy dt, and dz dt. And all of this was equal to zero. Now, I know that this is equal to 1. I know this is equal to 1. I don't know what this is, but I know this is equal to t, and I know this is equal to t. Maybe I don't know what y is, but let's see how far we can go. So I can dot product these two things. They get 2t times uh, 1 plus 2y times dy dt minus 2t, so it's just t, remember, times 1 is equal to 0. So that cancels with that, and I get 2y dy dt is equal to 0. And I know from the question that y is not equal to 0, so dy dt is equal to 0. And I did it without knowing what y was. And that's the real power of the chain rule here.